They definitely don't have any personal space. Yeah. The golden retriever had a strong bark. That was. Life is definitely simple, we make it complicated. So my goal in life right now is to make sure that I share my wisdom to the next generation. Yes. Rebel and Callie fight. They never fight over a toy. I will notice all of a sudden I'll be in the kitchen or wherever and there's tension. Mm -hmm. And they'll, Rebel. if I. Rebel and Callie. Yeah, Rebel, Rebel and Callie. Callie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Rebel and Callie. And Thank then you. they'll just go out in a full on brawl. So they're kind of similar. Right? Similar size, both females. Cody's the only Happy go lucky male. and then this one is playful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and do it's they happened. fight for a ball? They fight for, for never a territory? For, they fight never for food? For, never for a toy. Position it's, within the pack? Yeah, I think... So it didn't start happening until Callie got uh, bigger in size. When they were about the same size as when they started fighting. How old is, how old is Callie? Four. Four years? Mm -hmm. And Rebel is seven. Okay. So it's a position within the pack. Yeah and it's a problem. What you don't have, in my opinion, is you don't have the exercise of the pack walk and the rules by the limitations so they don't have to establish within each other. Right. You know what I mean? Because so, the fight is, is, is toy territory or who's gonna uh, rule. Because mm -hmm. you know, the older they get, the older one has to move out of the way. Mm -hmm. So t for you guys to avoid it, you have to take the position. So the human have to take the authority figure, the leadership, just like the responsibility of giving a roof, giving water, food, and bed care. You also have to provide the authority figure. It's just the difference between human and a dog is the way they learn. Dog is nose, eyes, ears, and a human is ears, eyes, nose. So that's why it's not good to humanize a dog because you end up talking to the dog like he's a human, mm -hmm. but he's not gonna comprehend. So how you create the connection in a pack is through the walk. So if you're not walking yet, that's the first thing you have to do to connect at an instinctual level. Well, I can so definitely can help you guys. So can it be accomplished if someone else is walking the door, uh, dog? It's or? like somebody else babysitting your kids. Yeah. Right. So uh, the connection is not going to be there. They don't know you're investing money for that service. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna, mom, thank you so much for hiring <laughs> me. You're so kind and you work so hard. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so it will be ideal to teach that person so it can learn how to walk the pack because the separation uh, doesn't create the unity. Mm -hmm. I felt like, well, at least they're getting walked and at least they're getting exercise yeah. than waiting for the days that we ha yeah. do have the time to do it. So I was like kind of weighing out which was best. Well, you, you can start committing to one day as a family, walking as a pack, you know what I mean? Like one day and, mm -hmm. and, and, and um, at 30 minutes, mm -hmm. um, it's not a lot, but, but yeah, you can put can a backpack it. on a dog. So that, that way with this, those 30 minutes with the backpack on becomes an hour. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Because the walk should be uh, uh, an activity where they're not focusing on things in the floor and they're just focusing, carrying something. That allows them to find a purpose Right, so, it's, so it's, the, it's the equivalent of reading or going to school and you can't get distracted by anything else. So when a dog goes for a walk, he's in school, right? And so you can reward with play and explore. Follow, play, explore. So use the play and explore as a reward, but use the, the walk as the connection. They definitely don't have any personal space. Yeah. So the reason I'm putting the leash on this one is because this one is the one orchestrates the energy, mm -hmm. right? So however this one behaves is going to tell everybody to be in people's space. So just to have this little distance and 
That's normal, the, the anxiety part. Yeah. yeah, that's super normal. Yeah. So as you see how the other ones are responding because you're controlling the source. You follow what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whatever, is that she? Yes. So whatever she does, the rest of the pack is going to follow. Is she the pack leader? In this aspect, yes. And, and like not having rules for food, Yeah, like she can teach bad habits and that makes her the pack leader. See that, this is what we want. So this is what they naturally supposed to be doing without the leash. But when you have a dog that is, doesn't, that is from five to 10, excited wise, there you go. Um, you need a leash for that because the, uh, the, 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 uh, the brain hasn't learned rules by limitation. That's when you put a leash on it. You see what I mean? So when you physically move the leash, it's just to snap the brain out from the excitement. You see it? So this is the influencer. This is your TikToker now <laughs> when it comes to food. And then you can have somebody else do the barking. That's, that's a natural behavior. This is good. See, this is, this is the right way. That's the right way. This is the right way. This still the intention because she's still excited. So the rest of the pack is calm surrender. You see my point? Yeah. Yeah. So your energy, your tool, and the activity is what's creating the communication. So we're communicating the dog way, nose, eyes, ears, leadership, right? So it's, otherwise they can't really understand that that's what you want, because your energy has to become confident. So this way, this way, you will actually prevent fights, because the closer they get to the food, the more eye contact is gonna happen. So you mentioned that Cody barks, you know, when people knock on the door or ring the bell. Yes. So I would like to see that part, so I can yes. show you how to, how to react to that. All right, The golden retriever had a strong bark. That's not normal? Usually it's him. It's the So come with me. So before you open the door, you have to come and claim here. Go back. So when somebody comes in, they already give per so social distance and you calm the brain down. Follow me? So when you come in, you come in claiming mm -hmm. that they're gonna go back, then you open the door. Then eventually what they're gonna learn, and even if the human rings the bell, they can come to the door and tell you that somebody's at the door without the barking. That's how explosive dogs tell the handler that it's an explosive there. So now we're gonna. See, that's, that's just a, a side effect of it. You know, it's not, it's not a, a, like, a, a reason for it. It's just the sound triggers that reaction. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to learn is that that sound triggers calmness, just like the cheese triggers calmness. Mm -hmm. you want, see, you don't practice calmness enough. That's, the, that's yes. what's happening. You know what I mean? So if you don't practice calmness enough, and then the nose can't tell the brain to be calm. The ears can't tell the brain to be calm. So you don't have to tell the dog, wait, sit, stay, don't bark. It's that sound should tell the brain to do that. It's the smell should tell the brain to do that. The sight should tell. So squirrel means, it's a sight, right? So squirrel means calmness. Doorbell means calmness. Cheese means calmness. The opposite of what you have allowed. But because you don't practice it, then the brain hasn't practice calm surrender. All the humans that come in, the more the practice knows I see ears, calm, you know, calm, confident, rules by limitations, the better for you. Because mm -hmm. okay. in order for the dog to be social, he needs the exposure. So everyone. You see it? That's right, everybody. So the more humans that practice knows I see ears, mm -hmm. we, should, we shouldn't, in reality, we shouldn't have dog problems in the world, right? So the only reason why we have dog problems is because we're doing the opposite. We're creating problems. 
You're providing an affection, but you're giving it to the wrong state of mind. You know, even food is affection. Right. So if you give them food when the brain is frustrated, or you're still giving them food when the brain is frustrated or bored. You know what I mean? The brain did not accomplish anything that day, but he still received food. It's, it's, it's for some reason, people believe that if you greet a dog excited, when the dog is excited, that makes you a good dog lover. That makes you a, a human that, that loves dogs, understands dogs, connects with dogs. So that, that is more a, a, a behavior or, a, or a, a learned behavior in different parts of the world. That doesn't happen all over the world. You know, not everybody goes, oh my God, I love dogs! <laughs> not everybody does that all over the world. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't grow up that way. I grew up, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. Let the dog come to you, let him smell you, let him show you that he trusts you, then you can pet. You see it? So I have to create the trust before I give my love. Most people, they just give love regardless of trust, respect. Trust, respect, love. So if we practice nose eyes, ears with a dog worldwide, all the dogs in the world will get the same benefit. If we practice exercise, discipline, and affection with all the dogs, all the dogs in the world will, will gain the same outcome. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.